Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Lacey and this is my art channel. So when I was trying to come up with an idea for today's video, I remembered how I have a lot of art supplies that I've been wanting to try but I haven't. I'm not sure why. Some of the stuff I really want to try but I just haven't prioritized it. I think normally when I'm trying to decide what to do in my everyday life, I am propelled by like what my next idea for my YouTube channel is and I try to do things that I think that all of you will want to see like for example my paper squishy series, my create this book series, my bullet journal series, etc. I go by what I think is doing the best on my YouTube channel and then I try to alternate it but I also try to do things that I enjoy because if it's not enjoyable then why do it? So anyway in today's video we're going to test new art supplies. Now like I said I have many art supplies that I've been wanting to try, but I haven't. This particular art supply has caught my eye because recently I watched a video on YouTube by a YouTuber named Katie Moody. She was testing out a water-soluble crayon that she compared to Caran d'Ache Neo Color Pastels. I've actually really been interested in the Caran d'Ache Pastels for a long time now, and I've considered buying some. They're just kind of pricey. Well, turns out this particular art supplies that I have here is very similar to the water soluble crayon that she was showing in the video so I decided to try it out. These are called watercolor creams. They're in metallic colors and they're by the brand Bria Reese. My mom bought these for me. I looked them up online. They're not very expensive if you want to try them for yourself. My watercolor creams came with a little booklet to read about techniques on how to use them. So after swatching each color I decided to try out each method. So here's what it said. Watercolor creams tips and techniques, instructions, draw directly onto your porous surface such as watercolor paper, canvas, or wood. All right, already failed that. <laughs> Just using my Illo sketchbook, don't mind me. For watercolor effects, add water to blend and soften colors. Use inside cover as a palette or to mix colors. Yeah, I'm not going to do that either just because it'll be messy and I don't want to have to clean the case. Anyway, we have number one, smudge. Draw on your surface with a dry watercolor cream. Then use your finger to smudge the color. Okay, so I did try this. It reminded me a bit of like using oil pastels, though normally I would use like a piece of tissue paper or a blending stump to blend those colors. What I didn't like about blending these is that where you marked on the paper is darker than the rest of the colored area. This was not my favorite method by any means and it's messy, so moving on. Number two draw. Draw directly on your surface without using any water. For heavier coverage, apply more pressure. This method does give you a nice color, but because these creams are so thick, it gets like a bit clumpy on the paper, especially the harder that you draw. Number three, draw and paint. Draw on your surface with a dry watercolor cream, then use a wet paintbrush to spread the color. Okay, spoiler alert, but this is my favorite method with these watercolor creams. I think that it's easy and it gives a good color for the most part. Number four, paint. Dab a wet paintbrush onto the tip of a watercolor cream. Brush the color onto the surface. This method was fine, a little tedious, but I'll give it like a solid second place. Five, paper towel. Apply watercolor to your surface using the traditional watercolor technique, number four. Then apply a crumpled paper towel over the watercolor and let dry undisturbed. When dry, remove the paper towel to reveal a texture. This method was unnecessary, in my opinion. So I did it and I really didn't see much of a difference. I don't know if it's because I did such a small area. That being said, later I did have to dab my picture with a paper towel while it was wet and I did somewhat see what they were going for. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but it could possibly work. Anyway, number six, watercolor creams on wet paper. Wet your surface with water. Using your paintbrush, pick up 
the color from your watercolor cream and apply it to the wet surface. To be honest, I don't really like this method even with regular watercolors, so maybe I'm not like the best person to be judging this one. I did think it took a lot of effort to actually get the color to show up within the water. Number seven, splattering. Dab a wet paintbrush onto the tip of a watercolor cream and position over your surface. To splatter the watercolor, tap the end of the paintbrush handle repeatedly. The larger the brush, the larger the splatters. This method was fine. Very similar to splattering with watercolors. Number eight, stamp. Color directly onto a rubber stamp, then spritz or mist with water and stamp onto the surface. So I kind of messed this one up. So initially I just tried to color the stamp and stamp it. It worked perfectly. But then the second time I spritzed it and I had it washed off the ink that was like on the stamp to begin with so the ink started like dripping off of it so then I cleaned it and then I tried again and this method did not work at all it's just too wet if you want to try that method I suggest just like coloring it and stamping it don't wet it. Okay, so after trying out all of these methods, I got to work actually creating an art piece. I decided to do a colorful sky. I just got this idea from Pinterest. I searched watercolor art and there were a ton of skies, so I did that. It was fun for the most part. I found out that the white basically doesn't show up like at all. It's my least favorite of the colors. And also have you noticed that we have no orange? I also found out that the yellow doesn't layer well. It's kind of transparent so you can see the other colors beneath it. And then I also found that when you wet the watercolor creams, it sort of like takes away some of the color. It goes from like opaque to transparent. It helped me to work in layers. After I did the watercolor creams, I did think something was missing, so I decided to use a white Posca marker to add some highlights and some elements here and there, the stars. I did like how it was coming out for the most part. It wasn't an art piece that I like wanted to hang on my wall, but it was a fine art piece to just try out this new art medium. In the end, I wanted to seal it. Now, when the watercolor cream swatches dried, they were mostly like dry and unmoving, but when I let the art piece dry and then I came back and I touched it, the cream came off on my hand. I don't know if this is because I did like so many layers or maybe I could have let it dry for like a few days. Not sure, but I decided to add Mod Podge Sparkle to seal it. It, so that way when I close the book it doesn't smear onto the other page. I also love Mod Podge Sparkle. I just love adding glitter to everything. <laughs> but unfortunately when I did that it did cause like the blue to smear into the yellow. Once I figured out it was going to do that I could somewhat prevent it by washing my paintbrush between colors. But it did mess up some of my pictures so I tried like wiping it and like dabbing it with a paper towel where it had smeared and then I ended up fixing it by adding some more like Posca paint. I tried to use the watercolor creams to fix it but since the Mod Podge Sparkle was already on it it made the surface kind of hard to use so using the Posca paint pens was really my only option. Overall I think it still came out okay. It's not super noticeable and again I see my sketchbook as a place to try new things, figure things out, learn, etc. So it was fine. Will I use the watercolor creams again? Well I think that it could be like a good base. Like if I wanted to do a watercolor painting and I needed a background, I think I could use it for that. Or if I wanted to add some like metallic colors, I could do that too. Though I did sort of buy metallic watercolors recently when my sister was visiting. So I'm not sure that this is something I'm going to reach for all the time. But we'll see if we can find a use for them. Also, if you want me to try out the metallic watercolors, let me know. And maybe it'll make an appearance in one of my future videos. If you liked this video, 
consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more art videos. Let me know in the comments what your favorite series of mine is. I know to make more of those videos. Plus, I love chatting with all of you. Also, let me know if you ever tried anything like this before. What did you think of them? I'm going to end here for now. I hope all of you are having a wonderful week and are staying healthy and warm. And if you made it this far, put a star emoji in the comments to let me know that you made it. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. Goodbye now.